YouTube has given uh, a preview to its creators about some of the changes coming down the pike. Cue the panic. So, this is a, an unscheduled video. It's a, an extra one this week because yeah, this is moving fast and I have thoughts. So, if you had not heard, depending on what kind of YouTubers you subscribe to, you may have already heard some version of this, but YouTube has a change coming out. Now, every time YouTube changes anything, be it the algorithm, the terms of service, or anything else, it basically sends shockwaves every time. Historically, it's been because they're really bad at communicating that to anybody. Now, to their credit, this is basically them. They sent out a note, um, a heads up to all of their creators that the the terms of service are changing. And there was a link to be able to see what they're going to be changing to starting in December, starting next month. So there was a bit of a heads up. That's more than we usually get. So, you know, points for that. But there are there's basically one specific segment that is new on the new terms and service that has a lot of people freaking out. So I want to talk about what that is, why it in why I believe YouTube is doing it and doing it the way they did it and then what the concerns are. Uh, so the there are a number of changes to this thing, to the terms of service, but the specific edition that has Everybody kind of running around like chickens with their heads cut off is this one. And I'm going to use their exact words because there's a lot of summation stuff out there and I'm always skeptical of that. So, this specifically is under the heading Terminations by YouTube for Service Changes. YouTube may terminate your access or your Google account's access to all parts of the service if YouTube believes in its sole discretion that provision of the ser that provision of the service to you is no longer commercially viable so that phrase specifically no longer commercially viable as a justification for terminating somebody's youtube account that has a lot of people worried and a lot of people panicked now before we dig into it let's talk about why YouTube is doing this because they actually have given us an indicator of that. Everyone's freaking out right now about what could happen as a result of this change and I will get to that. But first, let's actually talk about why this happened and YouTube does give some context and a reason and I personally don't have a reason to doubt that the reason that they give is what is behind this change and for it being worded the way it is. Now, was this the best way they could have done it? Well, we'll get to that. But what they said about this specific segment uh, was, let me get it, our terms now include more details about when we might need to terminate our agreement with bad actors. So, that is a term that YouTube has used basically for problematic accounts that it doesn't want on the platform, and that would be things like hate speech accounts, rec you know, recruitment channels um, that are trying to get people involved with hate groups. Basically, things, things that YouTube is a bit infamous for. Anything that appears to be using coded languages related to all sorts of objectionable material in order to get it out there in the open. All this sort of stuff that YouTube wants off its platform. And they want it off the platform because this is stuff that when it goes bad, makes headlines and it makes the advertisers nervous. So the problem YouTube has had has been coming up with rules that will allow them to get rid of these bad actors. So what they have opted to do is the wording that I read you earlier. Now, I actually think I understand why this was done the way that it was. And obviously, like I said, I don't have a reason to doubt that that is the motivation behind this new edition. And even a motivation as behind why it's worded as broadly as it is. Because if you are trying to deal with bad actors, and, and I can look at my own comment section and the choice and the decisions that I make in terms of what comments I block and what people I, I block their accounts from being able to comment on my channel, and I can understand their dilemma. Because if this is a problem they feel they need to tackle. Again, probably because the concerns about advertisers. So 
The problem with trying to tackle it with really specifically worded, really direct rules is twofold. Because if you try and deal with bad actors by basically um, making it not allowable for them to use specific words, specific iconography, specific imagery, it, that's not hard to get around. Because with anything like someone pushing a hate speech agenda, it is very easy, if they know what the rules are, to remove the specific offending words but still be pushing the ideology. So what that means is it allows people to follow the letter of the law but continue to violate the spirit of it. They're continuing to put out the kinds of content YouTube doesn't want on its platform even though they're technically following the rules. And flip of that, if they put out a rigid set of rules and stick to that, that means that anyone who is attempting to talk about bad actors and things that they do and try and break down or debunk hate speech or hate symbols or explain the iconography so that people are more aware and can watch out for it, they would be in violation of the letter of the law even though they are following the spirit and not producing that kind of content, only talking about it and trying to make people more aware of it. But they would be technically in violation of specific rules banning depictions or words or what have you. So I get why YouTube did not try and go super specific legalese, here are the rules. Because ultimately that's something that ends up working against them on multiple levels. So they went the other way and they went broad with it. Which again, I get. My basic operating principle, and I've said this out loud in terms of my own comment section is, don't be a jerk. And if I think you're being a jerk and I get to make that call, I will deal with it, either getting rid of the comment or getting rid of you. And I can't be more specific than that because then it gets waved in my face, but you said you wouldn't do this. Like, no, the baseline is it's my judgment. But of course, I'm one person running one, not all that big channel. It's very doable for me to do that. Now, with YouTube, they went broad. I would say they went too broad with this. There is a lot of concern right now as to how sweeping a power they are basically granting themselves with this new clause in the terms and services. So again, let's come back to that term. No longer commercially viable. Within the context of trying to deal with bad actors, that actually isn't a horrible phrase to make use of because some of these channels that I have no doubt, and I'm not naming names, so don't ask me to, but some of the channels that I have little doubt YouTube would very much like to purge from its, from its platform because it's scaring away advertisers, or at the very least is contributing to a culture that is scaring away advertisers. Some of them are not small. Some of them are of decent size, but by using the term no longer commercially viable, that allows YouTube to make an argument of, look, the amount of damage you're causing to our brand because you're scaring away advertisers is in excess of the, of the revenue that your videos actually bring in. Therefore, it is not commercially viable for us to support you. You are costing us more than you are bringing in. We can drop you. And I'm pretty sure that that is the intent behind the wording. But up to this point, I've been talking about YouTube's intent behind it. This is the point where we chuck intent out the window and talk about what they could feasibly do under this broad ruling. And this is where people are freaking out and getting very concerned. So that term, commercial viability, would mean, and again, I don't necessarily think it's YouTube's intention to do this, but it would empower them to do this if at some point down the line they decided to, any channel that is uploading videos but has very low traffic. Say it's someone just starting out trying to build something, or maybe it's a hobby. Maybe you're not trying to be commercially viable, but you do it because you like it and you're building a little community of your own. A couple hundred subscribers, a couple dozen views of video, you are tight with the people you want. Well, they have to pay for the bandwidth and the storage for whatever videos you upload, and if the revenue that you bring in is less than what it costs them to host your content, you're not commercially viable, which gives them grounds to boot you. Additionally, anyone whose channel has been dormant for a while, they may be deemed not commercially viable because they're not continuing to re-up the engagement. And so maybe views on old videos aren't enough to keep it going. Maybe, maybe YouTube can chuck them. This would give them the power to do that. Or even just a channel that has 
decided to change its gears and is and like a creator if they decided look I was doing this and it got me a lot of views but I don't want to do that anymore I want to do this now and they switch gears to something that they're passionate about but maybe get fewer views depending on their back catalog if they've got enough videos up eating up bandwidth and storage space and their new stuff isn't generating as much revenue maybe those books don't balance and maybe they get booted too so this is where a lot of the concerns are. And again, I don't have reason to believe that doing that is why this rule is being put in place. But it absolutely would empower YouTube to do it. So, to make a comparison, it's a bit how, like, the Patriot Act gave a lot of broad sweeping powers to uh, various United States intelligence agencies to monitor the internet. The intent being to monitor terrorist groups. The intent was never that they monitor Americans, but they had the ability to do that, and we have learned over the years they did in fact do that. So it is always a concern when some group or company or whoever is granted power that would enable them to do very skeevy, unfair, unethical practices. Because even if they say their intent, oh, well, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> we have no reason to trust YouTube. The best defense we have against anything is what the rules are. And when the rules are so broad that YouTube can basically do whatever they want, all we have is their word that they're not going to use that rule to screw us over. And I'm sorry, YouTube, I know this is biting the hand that feeds me. We can't trust you you. We have already seen how these rules that you say are meant to go one way are used to cripple other things. Again, maybe it's intentional or maybe it's the algorithm not being built well enough to distinguish between what you're trying to do and all the collateral damage. But the point is, we have no reason to give you the benefit of the doubt in terms of what you will actually do. So the baseline we have is the agreement is what you have committed to put down a paper to do. And you have committed to giving yourself a lot of power. So speaking personally, I run multiple channels. I have no particular reason to be worried about this one. But some of my other channels, I do not... I mean, The Break Room of Geeks just started. And that's not, that's not even monetizable yet. That's not even at a thousand subscribers yet. How long do I have to get it up there, to get that generating stuff before they decide, eh, this isn't worth it, and shut that down? My Vera Wild channel, where I talk m more specifically about my experiences as a gender fluid person, I haven't done an upload on that channel in months because I haven't had the time to do it. Is that now in danger because I'm not generating continuous content and re-upping the engagement over and over and over again? Am I going to lose that channel now because hosting the old videos is no longer viable for the amount of views that they get? I don't know. And that's... That's frustrating, at best. It's scary. Honestly, for anyone who either this is their primary source of income or they are hoping to one day make it their primary source of income, hello, this is really terrifying because it is honestly a reality of YouTube that we are at the mercy of the platform holder. If they take away our platform, which they are within their rights to do, broadly speaking, and now they have pretense under which they can claim to do it. Now, the only reassurance we have about all this, if someone loses everything unfairly, they can appeal. But YouTube's appeal process is slow and busted. And this doesn't help that this is coming on the heels of a lot of YouTubers, Markiplier did a video not long ago talking about this, um, and I'll link to that below because this is kind of a separate issue, but this is happening back to back, that a whole bunch of people are getting locked out of their accounts for quote-unquote spamming when all they were doing was using a bunch of emojis in a comment section on a live stream. And then they would appeal and lose the appeal and not be told why. Or they would win the appeal and then the appeal would get reversed and they'd still lose everything. So again... It's good that the, an appeal process exists, but we can look at how the appeal process has worked with YouTube and 
there's not a ton of faith we can have in that. Come in. soft as well. Adorable! Okay, I'm so glad. What happened to this slime? There isn't much left. I got another pink. I don't know. It's a pink piggy! What, what is it, what is it on? What is it all over now that it's not in the jar? Nothing. <laughs> I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet a bunch of it, I just washed, washed off my hands. Probably. Could you shut the door, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. That brownie smell is all the way from downstairs in the kitchen to up here. The brownies smell very good, don't they? <laughs> All right. Now, there is one other thing that I want to address on this. Some people have expressed concern that the wording would allow YouTube to shut them out, not only of their YouTube accounts, but their Google accounts as well. And if that were the case, that means you could be shut out of Google Calendars, Google Docs, your Gmail, all of which is kind of important. Now, I don't believe that's actually the case. I think people are misreading this. So again, during the specific wording, YouTube may terminate your access or your Google accounts access to all parts of the service if YouTube believes in its sole discretion that provision of service to you is no longer commercially viable. So I think people are freaking out because they see that Google account is listed, but it doesn't say terminate access to your Google account. It says terminate your Google accounts access. So there are people freaking out that they would lose everything connected to Google and be locked out of their Google account and not just their YouTube access. That does not appear to be the case. That is not what the wording says. And I do think that wording is actually pretty clear. I don't think I'm interpreting that wrongly. I think people just saw the word Google account next to the word terminate and freaked out. So what can we do about this? Well, there are a couple of things. The first is we can complain about it. Um, which honestly does help. In the past, when, I mean, YouTube with anybody, when enough of us have said loudly enough, this has to change, it has. Usually slowly, way more slowly than it should, but whether it be things like the copyright system that enough of us complain, the copyright strike system, which enough of us complained about loud enough that it is better than it used to be. Still needs work, but it's better than it was a few years ago. The entire um, uh, not, not family friendly system that was automatically flagging LGBTQ plus people. That has largely been sorted. There are other issues related to LGBTQ plus content, but I'm not gonna deal with that. But that specifically, that did get adjusted and it has improved. And I can say that as someone who puts out LGBTQ plus related content that used to get automatically marked as not, not advertiser friendly and doesn't anymore. So again, enough of us complain that that got better. Still needs work, but it got better. So just because this is changing and it's changing quickly enough that it's gonna, it's gonna turn out the way that it is currently worded. But if enough of us complain loudly enough, often enough, for long enough, it can and will be adjusted. And that is worth doing. So the other thing is that you, if you have the ability, because that first thing, we can all do it. We can all complain, we can all add our voices to saying, hey, this, I understand why, or at least I'm going to say, I understand why you went broad, this is, too broad, but if you have the ability to support any YouTuber on a platform other than YouTube, I would encourage you to do that. So this is partly self-promotional, but like in my case, that's Patreon. And if I ever get to the point where I am able to make this my full-time job, which I do honestly think I can get there, I'm working on it, but it's going to be dependent on Patreon support, not YouTube growth. I will never base that decision solely off YouTube income. I am basing that decision based off what is coming in completely separate from YouTube because I've been acutely aware for a very long time that YouTube as a platform could be taken away from me at any moment. There's only so many eggs I'm willing to put in that basket. So a way that you can help any creator that you feel has brought value to you, to this platform, to other people, if they have another means of supporting them, whether it be Patreon, whether it be Coffee, whether they're running a Kickstarter for an upcoming project, consider supporting them because this 
platform, as much as we need it, and we do need it, it's too big to not use, this platform does not treat us well. And we need whatever support you can give us off this specific platform. So that's my breakdown and my thoughts on the change to YouTube that's happening that a lot of people are freaking out about. What are your thoughts on it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's links down there as well. There's the Patreon I mentioned. Like, subscribe. As long as I'm still on this platform, those will help me out too, as will comments. There's links for other stuff below. Merch, I have a book, all sorts of stuff. All linked down below. Click on them or don't. I am not gonna tell you what to do. I don't have the ability to dictate the rules to you because you're the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned for as long as I can stay on here. Come in. Yep. Super soft as well. Adorable. Okay, I'm so glad. What happened to this slime? There isn't much left. I got another pink. I don't know. It's a pink piggy. What what is it what is it on? What is it all over now that it's not in the jar? I bet, I bet, I bet a bunch of it, I just washed, washed off my hands. Probably. Could you shut the door, please? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. That brownie smell is all the way from downstairs in the kitchen to up here. The brownies smell very good, don't they? <laughs> all right.